So in what ways could training with Kramapa be painful? Um, especially now, you know, I think, you know, what's really painful is like when you see um, like when you see how you have made him upset sometimes, you know, that's not easy. Uh, that, you know, <clears throat> as a child or as a young uh, young monk, uh, you don't know sometimes, you know, what's best. And you think you're doing the right thing, but actually not, you know. But when you look back, you know, uh, sometimes it's painful to see how stupid, like I have been, you know, at certain times. And, you know, my friends. And at the same time, we have been actually very brilliant at another time. So it's nothing to worry about uh, too much. But uh, in all together, His Holiness's training was really interesting because, uh, you know, he gave a lot of guidance and he built a lot of infrastructure uh, for young lamas and monks uh, to train themselves and become more independent. And he gave a lot of uh, advice and uh, vision to establish uh, the lineage uh, roots in exile, uh, just to preserve and continue. And so, therefore, one of the things, uh, as you may have done already, is um, uh, one remarkable thing that His Holiness did is establishing the Shedra, the monastic college, the education. That, you know, we have known that um, his Holiness had this vision since he was a uh, teenage, uh, but in, in Surpal. But he did not have the right causes and conditions coming together to establish this college until his later age. And so this was really a great moment uh, for His Holiness's vision to come into fruition because uh, the monastic college or the shared system for Trupu and Kamakagi lineage in general has been quite um, um, weak uh, since the 10th Kamapas, uh, 10th Kamapa time. Uh, because of political reasons in Tibet. You know, there has been some uh, unnecessary political struggle in central Tibet. Uh, so the Kamakagi monastic colleges have been uh, closed down and so on. And so this is really like a revival and starting up again the tradition, even though the lineage continued in some kind of uh, low key, you know. so. His vision of establishing the monastic college was really amazing. And uh, I was lucky enough to be one of the first batch of students at the Shedra. <clears throat> and so our experiences there have been really interesting because, um, you know, when we started the classes, the building was not even finished. And so there were like cements all over, you know. We would sit down to for for class or something, even though we had cushions. But still, when we got up, you know, our robes were all white everywhere. There's like cement, and like we've been living with this kind of cement uh, smell for months. But studying this, you know, tremendously uh, profound and powerful <laughs> spiritual teachings in in this environment of a construction uh, zone, uh, and then. Um, you know, at the Shedra, uh, since we uh, our class has been the first, you know, first batch of students, you know, we had to do everything, like from cleaning dishes to moving, let's say, moving the you know marbles for new shrine room, to you know, uh, debate, to um, teaching younger classes, you know, our class has to do everything. And also it's been the first batch of class, so we call it uh, guinea pigs. Yeah. Right? We were the guinea pigs, the teachers were testing, you know, which uh, class is working which way, you know, they just test on us. So uh, it took us a little bit longer than uh, scheduled. You know, schedule was for nine years, but we end up studying for 10 years, <laughs> yeah, well, one, one extra year you know, for smart people.
Yeah, yeah, or, you know, for doing <laughs> construction on the side, basically. <laughs> yeah.